Stopping the news this Sunday, officials at the Ministry of Works prioritizing its list of repairs on hurricane-ravaged Abaco. As many buildings endured significant damage from Hurricane Dorian more than a month ago. A delegation led by the Ministers of Works and Environment recently assessed infrastructure in North Abaco and visited the Little Abaco Bridge that needs to be completely rebuilt. We're going to do the best job we can for Abaco, so we don't have this challenge again. Minister of Works, the Honorable Desmond Bannister, viewing the significant destruction of the Little Abaco Bridge during his recent trip to the island. The bridge, located between Cooperstown and Wood Key, separates Great and Little Abaco. Ministry of Works officials confirmed that the bridge was completed a year ago, but the strong storm surge and heavy rainfall from Hurricane Dorian destroyed it. And now, the plan is to build a new bridge. Director of Works, Melanie Roach. Well, what we want to do is to make sure that um, we not only put a superior structure um, here, but we're also going to create a clear channel um, so that the water can flow freely. And also we're going to put it up high enough that small, you know, yeah, small boats would be able to pass underneath. And I think that would be um, good for leisure and for recreation and even um, for some tourist activities to, to be established in this area. When they had put down the culverts um, originally, if you'd come here at any time of the day on either side, the fish were just jumping out of the water. Um, so we think that once we're able to create back that clear channel, that you would see a revitalization of the mangroves and that the fish stock will um, improve and increase and provide food and recreation for the people of Abaco and persons who visit Abaco. The side of the bridge was filled to temporarily accommodate travel for residents in the area, and Ministry of Works officials plan to create a permanent solution at the start of the new year. Because it was culverts, um, you only you had a restricted flow because you only had the water could only go through the channels, the openings in the culvert, and during the hurricane where you get the storm surge, really, it just the, the openings just couldn't handle the amount of water that was coming through. But what we are going to create is a clear span bridge, so there'll be nothing in the water between the two ends that would restrict the water from flowing. It could flow under and it could flow over. There's a bypass road that has, has been created to, for transportation for just a short while, but the, the ideal solution is for us to put a bridge here and then all of the water will flow naturally and there won't be any challenges with respect to uh, this kind of thing happening. Um, this was the wrong decision from the start and uh, we're going to do it right. Environment Minister the Honorable Ramal Ferreira acknowledged the bridge's environmental impact and the need for immediate reconstruction. Normally at high tide and low tide, before the road, historically before there ever was this road, you would have complete flushing. So you'd have the wa all the water that's in the creek will eventually find its way out into the ocean and all the larvae and juvenile fish that, that's floating in that water column will go out into the sea. So you put the road there, that means that Everything that's on this side can no longer go. It's a physical barrier for them to get out to the sea. And then you put the culverts in, you have less of a physical barrier because the culverts are shaped like the letter U, upside down. So you just think of an upside down U, like a tunnel. And so if a culvert is just an anecdote for a tunnel, you have a series of tunnels, and you can see them behind me, that allows the water to flow. But it still doesn't allow full exchange because because of the sides of the tunnel or the sides of the culvert.